this video, we'll discuss sharpening in Dynamic Media Classic. We'll look at how sharpening works, why it's important, how to apply it, and give you some tips on how to get great results. So let's get started. Sharpening enhances edge contrast and makes your image pop. The enhanced contrast creates a perception of sharpness. Most images will benefit from sharpening. If you look at these three images, you can see how the unsharpened image on the left appears blurry. The middle image has been sharpened. It looks crisper than the image on the left, but it still lacks contrast and feels a bit flat. The image on the right has also been sharpened, and unsharp masking has been added. The additional unsharp masking makes it look crisp, vibrant, and more dimensional. The amount of image sharpening needed is subjective and will vary depending on the image, the brand, and personal preference. In a typical production workflow, master images are prepared and uploaded to Dynamic Media Classic. Preparation may include such things as cropping, color correction, exposure, and sharpening. Dynamic Media Classic must generally downsample an image before sending it to be used in an experience. The downsampling process creates a loss of pixel data causing an image to become unsharp. To compensate for this, we add sharpening to help recover the loss in image quality. As you look at the three images, you can observe the direct relationship between downsampling and sharpness. The large image on the left is sharp, but the smaller images become more blurry. When Dynamic Media Classic resamples an image, it uses the selected resampling mode. Dynamic Media Classic provides several downsampling modes, including bilinear, bicubic, sharp2, and bisharp, which uses the same resampling method as Photoshop. The visual differences among these modes may be subtle, but will be more pronounced with certain types of images. If you look at the four images displayed, you will see that methods sharp2 and bisharp are a bit sharper than the bilinear and bicubic modes. We generally recommend Sharp 2 or by Sharp for the sharpest results, but you can choose whichever method works best for you. It is also important to understand that while sharpening can help compensate for blurriness introduced by downsampling, it cannot fix an image that is out of focus or of poor quality. If you look at these two images, you can see that the image on the left is out of focus. The image on the right has been sharpened, but still fails to recover image quality. Keep in mind that image quality is also affected by other factors such as image compression. The image on the left has been highly compressed, resulting in lower image quality than the image on the right, which has a low compression setting. To get the best results, start with a high quality master image. We recommend an image with a minimum longest pixel dimension of 2000 pixels. As a starting point, we suggest the following sharpening settings to produce a high quality image. Set the resampling mode to Sharp 2 or by Sharp, and set the unsharp mask parameters as follows. Amount 1.75, Radius 0.3, Threshold 2, and Monochrome 0. These settings generally produce great results by combining a high quality resampling mode with additional unsharp masking. The sample image was produced for these baseline settings, but you will need to determine the best settings for your own images through testing. Be careful not to over sharpen. When an image is sharpened too much, the image quality decreases. The image on the left has not been sharpened and appears a bit blurry and flat. The image in the middle has been sharpened and an appropriate amount of unsharp masking has been applied. The image feels crisp, vibrant, and dimensional. The image on the right has had too much unsharp masking applied. With too much sharpness, we begin to see halos, banding, and pixelization. The images become too contrasty and the overall quality of the image is diminished. Also be sure to adjust your sharpening settings when you are working with your images at the actual display size. If you adjust the settings when the image is zoomed in or out, you may not get the results you desire. Once you have determined the sharpening settings that work best, you will need to apply them to images. Dynamic Media Classic provides several ways to do this. You can add sharpening settings to image presets. 
You can add sharpening modifiers to the URL or add them to a viewer preset and then apply them to a viewer such as a zoom or spin. You can create image specific overrides to the global image sharpening values and you can define company wide sharpening settings. We recommend using image presets as a convenient and powerful way to encapsulate and manage settings. There are advantages to using image presets rather than using URL modifiers. The URL used to request your image becomes simpler and shorter. It also gives you more control and simplifies settings. If you need to modify settings, simply modify the preset and all URLs that use that preset will be modified accordingly. To create an image preset, we'll go to the Dynamic Media Classic account, go to Setup, and then Image Presets. I'll click on Add, and I'll create a name for my preset. I'll call this Standard Sharpening. I'll give it a width of 600 pixels. I'll leave these settings alone. I'll go to my Unsharp Masking settings and I'll add 1.75 for the amount. I'll set the radius to 0 0.3 and I'll set the threshold to 2. I'll save and then close. To test my image preset, again, I'll go to Setup, Image Presets, and I'll go ahead and select the image preset that I just created. I'm going to browse for an image that I want to test with. So I'm going to select this image here. And now I can see my image preset applied to this image. If I decide I want to make a change, I can simply click Edit. And let's say I wanted to change my radius to 1.0 to get a greater effect. I can immediately see the effect of those changes in this preview window. If I'm satisfied, I can go ahead and click Save. OK. And Close. And I've modified my image preset.